Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to talk about the Precision Farming add-on by Giant Software. We're going to cover this in a four-part series. And this is part one, an introduction to Precision Farming. But before that, this video is brought to you by Juddy and Jerry's Keeper O. Thank you for being farm barons. So what is Precision Farming? Precision Farming is a free add-on slash DLC slash mod from Giant Software. It is a collaboration between John Deere Germany, the EIT Food Group, which is Europe's leading food innovation group. It is co-funded by the EU and is meant to highlight sustainable technology in agriculture in collaboration with the Institute of Animal Reproduction and Food Research of Polish Academy of Sciences, the Grupo AN in Spain, and the Universities of Hockenheim in Germany, and the University of Reading in the UK. Precision Farming first came to Farming Simulator in Farming Simulator 19 as a free add-on DLC mod and carries forward into Farming Simulator 22 with a lot of the features that were a part of the original introduction, introduction of precision farming, but it also includes a few other new aspects. And I have to say, I really like the new additions that they have brought to precision farming. Now, you do not have to play with precision farming if you do not like what you hear in any of the four parts of this video series. Simply just don't add it and the base game will operate exactly how the base game has operated since its release. But in my opinion, this really adds a whole new dynamic to the gameplay. And if you've been getting a little bored with just the rigmarole of wash, rinse, and repeat, then this might just be what you need in order to get basically a good kick in the pants to get reinvigorated with Farming Simulator 22. So what is new from Farm Sim 19's precision farming to Farm Sim 22's precision farming. Well, first up, we have a few new pieces of machinery. One of those is the Azara Pro Active Crop Sensor. This crop sensor is going to be used after first growth to detect the nitrogen levels that are in the crop in the field and then dynamically adjust how much fertilizer is being applied to the field at that specific point. In addition to the active crop sensor, we have some passive crop sensors that have been added to every base game tractor in the game, as well as DLC tractors. So we have the saddle track, the pre-order saddle track. You can add it there. We have the Antonio Cario DLC, all of those vehicles. You can add it to them. The difference between the passive sensor, which we see up here on this Kloss Axion, and the active sensor is the passive sensor is going to require light from the sun. The active sensor has active infrared emitters, and therefore you're gonna be able to use the active sensor in low light. We also have a new sprayer in the John Deere R732i See and Spray sprayer. Now this sprayer can be used with liquid fertilizer or herbicide. As we see it here, it is configured with the See and Spray technology, and that is going to be used to spray herbicide only on the parts of the field that actually have weeds growing in them. So base game, you spray herbicides, you blanket the entire field because weeds blanket the entire field. But we all know that's not legit. That's not how things really work in real life. In real life, weeds grow just where they grow. They don't grow everywhere across an entire field. This sprayer is going to be able to see the weeds with cameras, identify the weed versus the plant that we are obviously desiring to grow. And then it is going to open the spray nozzle only on the spray bar when it is over the weed 
spritzing herbicide only on the weed and therefore you're going to have more efficient use of herbicide and therefore one it's going to cost less and two you're going to have a better crop in the end also new with precision farming and farming simulator 22 we have a manure sensor that goes on our slurry spreaders and this is going to allow us to dynamically sense the amount of nitrogen in the liquid manure as it is going through the pump and through the applicators to sense how much nitrogen is in the product. And as we get to areas of the tank that have lower nitrogen levels, well, the pump is just gonna pump more product into the dirt. As we get to areas that are more concentrated in nitrogen, the pump's gonna slow down and we're gonna apply less product to the ground. So ideally we have a more even application of nitrogen in the ground with respect to organic fertilizer. We also have a new concept and that is variable seed application. So we are going to be able to use a new John Deere sensor to basically apply a different amount of seed to the soil in your fields. So we take soil samples, we identify the types of soil. There are four different types of soil in precision farming. And then once we know the type of soil, we can dynamically apply the proper amount of seed to that particular type of soil. And every crop is going to have a different amount of seed that ideally should be applied to a given type of soil. We're gonna talk about that in a later part of the video series and don't worry it's not near as complex as it sounds because you know what you can just flip on the easy button and say do auto application now as you've seen we have a few buildings while these are not necessarily new to precision farming they are also returning but to round out what is new with precision farming we have the environmental score and the environmental score is broken down into five different categories. We have nitrogen, pH, weed control, soil sampling, and tillage. And the ideal environmental score is gonna be 100. When you start a brand new save game or you add precision farming to an existing save game, all the fields are gonna have an environmental score of 50. And as we hover our cursor over, each of these environmental scores for each particular field, you'll see that they are all right smack dab in the middle with respect to all of the five conditions. Nitrogen can have a maximum value of 30 points going towards the total score of 100. pH is gonna have a maximum value of 15 points. Weed control is gonna have a maximum value of 30 points. Soil sampling is gonna have a maximum value of 15 points. And tillage, is gonna have a maximum value of 10 points. If you do everything perfectly, then you're gonna have a maximum environmental score of 100. Also note down here, it says your environmental score does not affect the sell price right now. But spoiler alert, your environmental score can affect your selling price. In fact, if your environmental score is close to 100, you're gonna get the maximum selling price possible. If your environmental score is low, below 50, possibly even way lower, you're not going to get nearly a good price at the sell points because, well, sell points just don't wanna deal with people that aren't environmentally conscious. That's just modern day, that's the way things work. So if you play with precision farming, obviously you're gonna be motivated to keep that environmental score as high as possible in order to ultimately be able to sell your products at the best possible rate. Now let's just take a quick look at the precision farming interface here. It is a new tab that has been applied to the escape menu. Right down here, we have a little satellite. I'm gonna show you the little ground level here. So that is the precision farming icon. And we have four different soil types that are returning to precision farming in the FS22. Loamy sand, sandy loam, loam, and silty clay. We're going to talk about those soil types in a bit more detail in part two of this series. We have pH, and pH is the new lime. 
So we applied lime to the field in order to adjust the pH. Different soil types have different ideal pH levels. We're going to talk about that in part two of the video. But just to give you a little heads up, loamy sand, its ideal pH is 6. Sandy loam's ideal pH is 6.5. Loam is 6.75. And silty clay is 7.0 as far as ideal pH levels. What this means is back here under the main PDA world icon, under soil composition, we no longer have the needs lime indicator. It's because lime has been moved to the precision farming interface and lime is now pH. Same goes with respect to fertilizer. We no longer have under soil composition fertilizing state and see that it has no fertilization, first stage fertilization or second stage fertilization that has been removed and has been moved with precision farming to the nitrogen indicator here on the precision farming tab. And nitrogen is going to have different ideal values per soil type per crop. And we're going to talk about all of those when we get to that stage of our videos. And I think it's going to be Probably video series, video three, we're going to talk about nitrogen levels. But anyway, it's important to remember the need fertilization has been removed from the world icon or world PDA area of the escape menu and has been moved into the precision farming interface and is now listed as nitrogen. We have the concept with precision farming as variable yield. So different soil types ultimately have different max yields possible. For example, Lomi Sands max yield is going to be 80%. If you do everything perfectly, the best you can get out of Lomi Sand is 80%. Sandy Loam is your new, is your new norm. It is 100%. If you do everything perfect, Lomi Sand is or Sandy Loam is going to give you 100%. Loam on the other hand is ideal soil. Loam is going to give you potentially a 25% bonus in your yield. And silty clay, not quite ideal, but not near as bad as loamy sand. And you're going to get a max yield of 90% there. So after we do our soil sampling, which we're going to do in part two, you're going to see how fields 20 and 19 or 20 and 18 are going to look with respect to the different soil types. And as we progress through the video series, you're going to see that different soil types are going to take different amounts of fertilizer. They're going to require different amounts of lime. They're going to require different amounts of seed, potentially. And in the end, in part four, when we finally get around to harvesting, you're going to see that we're going to get a different amount of yield in different parts of the field as a result of the combination of the soil type and the crop and the amount of nitrogen we've applied and basically our pH levels. And then ultimately, in part four, we're also going to talk about a new part of precision farming is the economic analysis. Now, when I say new part, I don't mean brand new to FS22's precision farming. I just mean new to the game as a part of precision farming. I maybe misspoke there a little bit, but we have the environmental economic analysis that we're also going to talk about in part four. We then have our seed rate, low medium and high medium is also standard so that is also something that we've already talked about as far as being new to farming simulator 22's precision farming just a quick hint with respect to the precision farming tab we have the overall environmental score this is our average across all the fields we own on this particular map we own all the fields so our environmental score as a whole is not going to change much when we get our ideal environmental score on field 20. But what we can do is we can zoom into the PDA here and we're gonna then see each individual field's environmental score. So as we work field 20 through the rest of this series, we will see field 20's environmental score increase from 50, hopefully to an ideal level of 100. So guys, that is, basically what is new to precision farming 
let's go and take a look at the shop and run down all of the new machinery and where we can find the RTK buildings. What do the RTK buildings even do? And where can we add the passive sensors to our tractors? So if we go to mods and DLCs and then precision farming DLC, we have then the machinery that is specifically a part of this particular add-on. We have the Azara Scout, $17,000. This is going to attach to a three point and it is gonna be used to go around and take crop sensors, sensing crop samples, can't speak today. It's gonna to take crop samples of our soil and it's gonna store them in these little cups. We're then gonna be able to ship these little cups off to a lab for a fee. The lab's gonna take a little bit of time and then it's gonna return back to us a map of how the different soils map out on our field. We had this in FS19's version of precision farming. And I think the detecting range has been increased a little bit to 32 and a half meters for the FS22's variant of the Azara Scout. We have the Azara Pro Active sensor, which we've already talked about. This is gonna be used after your crop is in the ground. This is gonna be used to detect the nitrogen levels in the growing crop. So we had an active sensor in FS19 as a mod, but it did not work as it does realistically. It allows you to dynamically get soil samples. That's not how it works in real life. This sensor is used to detect the nitrogen that is in the crop. So that is how it works here in FS22's version of precision farming. We can get it in a standard configuration, which is just attached to the three point of a tractor. We have a power connector. We can also get it with weight attached. So we can get it with a 600 kilogram weight, a 750 kilogram weight, a thousand kilogram weight, 1.6 ton or 1500 kilogram weight, and then a 2500 kilogram weight. We can also get attached to the Azara Pro active sensor. We have the Garat Cote PTR 30, 30.000, slurry spreader this is included with precision farming and what is important about this is we can add the john deere manure sensor to this and in fact we can add it to all of these slurry applicators that are in the base game and there are ways that modders can add this to their own modded slurry applicators should they so wish going forward so we're just going to toggle that on you can see the sensor gets strapped to the pipe here. And as we can read it, the John Deere manure sensing will detect the nitrogen in your manure. As the nitrogen in the manure is never homogeneous, meaning it's never uniform, the sensor guarantees the application of the same amount of nitrogen over the entire field. So as you get to parts of the slurry that have less nitrogen in them, then this is going to pump more nitrogen into the soil. As you get to areas of the slurry that are rich in nitrogen, it is gonna pump less nitrogen into the soil. We can also go over here to slurry tankers and see this added to our base game slurry applicators. So we have the John Deere manure sensor there. On the farm tech, we can add it. It's added to the bottom and we can pretty much add it to any of these slurry applicators should we so wish. Just to show, we can also have it added to the pre-order bundle. The saddle track right there, we can add it to that. And then we have the John Deere R732i power spray. You can use it to spray liquid fertilizer, normal, or you could use it as a sole way of spraying herbicide on the field. It has a 28 meter working width and 3,360 liter storage capacity. And this really gets its power when you add the see and spray capability to it. With this configuration, as it says, each nozzle of the sprayer will turn on and off when there are actual weeds below the nozzle. With this, you may use up to less than 90% of the herbicide that you would typically use if you just blanketed the entire field. As a result, you are reducing your costs and protecting the environment by simply using less herbicide. 
So that is new with Precision Farming 22. If we come over to vehicles, we're gonna be able to then add the Izara Pro Compact sensors to all of our tractors. Now these are passive sensors and that they will require sunlight in order to detect the nitrogen levels in the crop. So that is compared to the active sensor, which uses active IR emitters to illuminate with infrared technology, infrared light, illuminate the crop and then detect the nitrogen that is in the crop based upon that illumination. So these are gonna be only able to be used during the daylight, whereas the active sensor is gonna be able to use, be used in low light conditions and at night. And you can see that is gonna be added to literally any tractor, including the Kloss Zerion that was added in the 1.4 update. See that get added there. And we can even come down here and add it to the Antonio Cario vehicles that are part of that DLC that was recently released. Now, as far as the RTK buildings, we're gonna find those under the build mode, under buildings and sheds. We have $17,000, the RTK base station, this brick building with a little John Deere sensor or um, transmitter on the top. And then we have the shed with RTK base station which we can use as a real shed also, which serves two purposes. And what this does is it allows your hired help to work more efficiently. Specifically, hired help will use the entire working width of whatever implement the hired help is using. So base game hired help is a little inefficient in that let's say with your harvester, it might use 95%, 96, 97% of the working width of your header. But there's a little bit of overlap that it doesn't quite make use of. What the RTK building will do is it will allow your hired help to use 100% of the working width of the implement. So the harvester header, the seeder, the fertilized spreader, the cultivator, the plow, the mower, whatever. It will use the entire working width, and therefore you're gonna make less passes over the field, means you're gonna work faster, ultimately for bigger fields, and it's gonna save you money in the end. It's also gonna save you fertilizer, lime, seed, and fuel. So that's what the RTK building ultimately does. There was a lot of confusion in FS19 as to what really purpose the RTK building did. But if you paid attention without the RTK building and you looked at your harvesters, which was the easiest thing to do, you could see a little bit of unused header on every pass. If you add the RTK building and hire a helper, it's gonna maximize the header width and therefore ultimately over the long run, you're gonna be using less fuel and you're gonna get the job done faster which means also you're paying less for your hired help. So guys, I hope you enjoyed part one of our precision farming series. We're gonna come back for part two. And in part two, we are going to talk about taking soil samples. We're going to use the Azara Scout to soil sample. We're also going to buy a soil survey of a field with respect to soil sampling. We're also gonna talk about field preparation, applying lime in order to get the ideal pH. Once we know the type of soil we have, we're gonna talk about direct seeding or tillage of the field, which is ideal, which is not so ideal with respect to getting the ideal 100 environmental score in the end. Let me know down in the comments below if this was helpful in any way with respect to understanding precision farming, or at least getting a working knowledge of precision farming. And until next time, happy farming.